everyone, Miss Nancy back, and I've got some wonderful YA fiction to show you, and I snuck into the director's office to do this, so shh, don't tell her. Anyway, our first, my first offering, I love this book. Um, this is a book by Mary Pearson, who you may have known from um, the Adoration of Jenna Fox trilogy, which was a fabulous dystopian um, series. This is not dystopian. This is a fantasy. And I loved everything about this book. It has a very, very strong heroine. It has uh, very strong side characters and a lot of intrigue, action, nice world building, and not an ooey gooey romance. Because if you know me, I hate ooey gooey romances. Um, the main character is Princess Leah. And she is all set to marry a, a prince from an adjacent kingdom so there can be this great alliance um, created just like they used to do in the old days. Only um, Princess Leah is having none of this. And so on her wedding day, she runs away. And that sets off an amazing chase by her father, the prince's kingdom, and a mysterious assassin from another part of the world who is order to kill her. Uh, the really cool thing about the way uh, Mary Pearson unfolds the story is she tells it through the perspective of three of the characters, Princess Leah, the Prince, and the Assassin, except you do not know who the Prince is and who the Assassin is until the very end because they use aliases throughout. So it's kind of a neat, cool guessing game to figure out as you're reading, who do you think this guy is? Who do you think that guy is? And to see if you're right. I was right. Um, as I said, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of political intrigue. There's stolen documents. There's disguises. There's a gift that the princess has that she didn't know she had. The whole nine yards. Um, and it ends right in the middle of a very uh, crisis building scene so that it makes you want to go to the next one and I can't wait for the next one. So try The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Now my next uh, book that I chose is one that I love. I never give you anything that I don't love, by the way. Um, this is an unusual book too. This is called One Death, Nine Stories. It's edited by Mark Aronson, who is a well-known YA author. Um, and it's a most unusual book because it has an overarching story about a 19-year-old boy named Kevin who has died. Um, but the thing about it is, instead of just a short story collection written from the same perspective, these are nine individual short stories written by nine individual YA authors like Ellen Hopkins and Will Weaver and Nora Baskin uh, and Chris Barton. And each story has a character that's either very deeply connected with Kevin or just connected to him by happenstance. Um, so as you go through the stories, um, you have to decide if the person in a particular story is changed by Kevin's death and how, and just how did Kevin die? Or does it even matter how he died or why he died? Um, there's a lot of connecting and disconnecting and interconnecting. Each has its own unique voice, um, and the final story just wraps the whole thing up nicely. Aronson tells us in a um, foreword that they started with the first story and then all the other authors built on that story doing their own thing. It was fascinating to read. It's a very short book because it's only nine stories. Most people don't like short story books, but I like them because you can read one full story in a sitting, so like um, finishing after finishing all your classwork or waiting for a test to end or at lunch. And uh, so try One Death, Nine Stories, edited by Mark Aronson, and see if you liked it just as much as I did. So the next uh, novel I'm going to offer you is called 
Trust Me, I'm Lying by Mary Elizabeth Summer. It is her first novel, um, and I think if you like detective stories, if you like very intelligent characters, well-written dialogue, and uh, a kind of attitude that you find, find in film noir, this one will be for you. The main character's name is Julep Dupree, and she's a grifter, which is another word for con artist, um, just like her father is. She goes to a very private elite academy in Chicago, um, but she's really poor. Um, her classmates uh, all live in rich homes, and she lives in this ratty apartment. She makes her money by offering her con artist services to her classmates, so things like um, figuring out a, a nice little deception um, to make sure your parents don't know where you are that night, or getting a girl to say yes to a boy's request to take her to a dance, those kinds of things. But then her father disappears and her apartment is trashed and there's clues left behind that she has to follow. Then it involves the FBI, a Ukrainian mob, and all kinds of shenanigans. Uh, her best friend Sam and one of the school heartthrobs heartthrobs, Tyler, help her along the way. There's a lot of danger, but Julep is, um, and that's not her real name, she is so strong that she keeps pushing, pushing, pushing into this mystery. I felt as I was reading it that if Katniss Everdeen found herself at St. Agatha's, her bravery would be just a drop in the bucket to Julep's. Um, she really doesn't want to end up like her father, running and hiding all of her life. So she becomes very determined to take down that mob all by herself. And the story is quite a ride. I could not put this one down. And I loved how all of her con artist skills ended up being used to achieve safety and peace for a lot of people. Because this is her first novel, we don't know much about her, but I expect, based on Trust Me, I'm Lying, I expect great things from her in the YA fiction area. So try Trust Me, I'm Lying by Mary Elizabeth Summer. This next book is a book that I would recommend to middle schoolers uh, all over. Uh, it is called Unfriended by Rachel Vale. Rachel Vale has written a lot of picture books, juvenile books, YA books. She's well known in the literature world. Um, and this book is all about that trying hormone filled world of middle school. It's played out very well. I would highly recommend that middle schools read it. Um, the dialogue seems very accurate um, and real to me and the whole queen bee popular kids, major drama world of middle school is on display and it's all of its ugly glory. Um, there's the girl uh, who's the main character, her name is Truly, and one day, all of a sudden, she is invited to the popular table, which is every girl's dream, right? Well, not mine. Um, but it means unfriending a friend, a current friend, and it means reconnecting with her old best friend, Natasha. Natasha is so fake nice that I couldn't see how anyone would buy her act, but buy it they do. And then things turn bad for just about everybody in this book. So the chapters move between several different characters, including boys, and I just love when boys are used as narrators because they have such a different perspective from girls. The boys in this book are the most grounded of all of the characters and they try to stay out and not get caught up in the girls over the top games and um, it is a bunch of very immature games. The twist to the story is that the bullies are ostracized along with everybody else. Everybody gets hurt in this story. What's on focus here is the power of social media to destroy someone's life in a very extreme short period of time. Um, I liked the conclusions that the kid, kids reached in the end as they try to fix their mess and it really shows the whole saying that you try to do the right thing but then you make everything worse. And that's what happens with these kids. Some of the adults in this story 
iron over the immature face either. Natasha's mother is so very clearly immature um, that it's a very telling case of like mother and daughter. Um, I would hope that the next time someone is thinking about posting a mean comment or a mean photo or anything online that they will have read this book and will think twice about it. So I recommend the middle schoolers Unfriended by Rachel Vale. And last but not least, here is another um, book that uh, involves social media as well and devices, electronic devices. It's called Free to Fall by Lauren Miller. Lauren Miller in her day job, or in her former day job, is was a Los Angeles entertainment attorney and she left that world to write YA novels. This is her second novel and I think we're going to see great things from her. So my question to people when they pick up this book is are you tethered to your iPhone, are you tethered to your iPad, your Galaxy Note, your Amazon Prime, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, your Twitter, whatever. Because Free to Fall envisions a very scary world where the makers and developers of those kinds of products ultimately use them to control our minds. So it's a dystopia. Uh, Aurora Vaughn is destined in this book to discover the plot and try to take it down. Um, there's some very real serious questions in this story. The value of an individual. Um, choosing to follow or not follow a different kind of path and the notion of free will which is used all throughout the book and is connected very strongly to John Milton's Paradise Lost um, poem which was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago but um, using it here reveals its enduring value uh, which and it is about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden um, the, they have a particular verse from Paradise Lost that they use a lot, and I'm going to read it for you because I could never memorize this. I formed, them, I formed them free, and free they must remain till they enthrall themselves. I else must change their nature and revoke the high decree, unchangeable, eternal, which ordained their freedom, they themselves ordained their fall. So it's all about the idea of free will and the choice to be good or not to be good. There's lots of plot twists in this book that you have to uh, suspend disbelief on, but I, that did not bother me at all in a story like this. The reader is constantly on guard to figure out who's the bad guy, who's the good guy, and if you like conspiracy theory, theories, you will like this uh, ride in one as well. I gave a lot of thought uh, after I read this book about whether the world that Lauren Miller uh, envisions here would ever come true. Would Amazon, would Apple, would Google ever be able to develop something that would control our minds? And I ha still haven't decided yes or no, but if it ever came to pass, it would be really, really scary. So. I invite you to read it and, say, and think, what will you think about that after you read it? So, Free to Fall by Lauren Miller. And I think I have to get out of my boss's office. So that's all for this month. Check back next month for more great books. Bye!